So now we're going to do a veneer graft. Veneer grafts, again, are a, a, a very useful technique. You can use on many different uh, species of plants. Um, I like to do veneer grafts on mangoes particularly, and um, I also find it's easier to use veneer grafts when you have a difference in size between your scion and your rootstock. Now, just to recap, remember that your scion is a variety that you want to graft from. This is the, the mango tree. This is a mango that I'm holding right here. And this is the mango tree that you want that from your neighbor that you've always wanted to grow or your grandmother's tree or whatever the tree you want to get. So you went out and got this mature piece of your bearing mango tree. And this is your scion. Your rootstock was a seedling that you planted and you grew up. Remember that your seedling needs to be healthy, fertilized, watered. It cannot be dying. If you graft a dying rootstock, you will get a dead graft. All right, it will not work. So you have to keep your graft and your scion healthy. One thing I didn't mention or I haven't mentioned is that the scion should be active but not yet pushed. It should be getting ready to grow. It should be swelling its buds is the terminology we normally use. So you want a scion that the buds are swelling, but not, they haven't pushed out. They haven't formed any new leaves yet. Um, now, with the veneer graft, again, the advantage is you can do this um, on, with, with your rootstock and your scion of different sizes. Now, I like the one, the one problem with veneer grass is you have to be a little better with your cutting. In other words, it's a little more difficult in order to make the right cut. So what I do with a veneer graft is I'm going to take my knife. Now, your grafting knife is beveled, okay? The grafting knife has a flat edge on this side, and then it has a bevel on the other side. So what happens is when I make my, my veneer cut, um, I go in and then I'm just sliding right along the wood making a very thin veneer cut into this rootstock, which I'm going to show you. It's just like you're taking a veneer of wood that you put on furniture. That's where the, the name comes from. So what I do is um, I get my knife here and I, oh beautiful, I feel the knife sliding right along the wood. Now let me move my hand and I'll show you right there. So I made the cut. There's that nice little veneer cut of, of bark. So what I've done is I've gone along the wood and I've slid, slid right along the wood and I've opened this up to, to, there's a cambium layer probably on this bark right here and there's a cambium layer on the wood. The cambium is the active part of the tree that is in this circular, um, is right under the bark of the tree. It's only about two cell layers thick. So this is, this is the part of the tree that I have to attach from my scion needs to attach onto this um, rootstock. So now I take my root, my scion, and again, this is a scion that I've cut off already and is uh, going to take me a minute to get a little bit here. It still ha it has parafilm wrapped onto it. The parafilm is our material that this is just a, a labor saver for us. Now we make our cut. Whoop. All right, now we go. There we go. Now you see, I actually made, I didn't make it in one simple motion. It would have been better if I had done one simple motion. But because I, with practice, you get that you can start and stop like that and still come off with a good cut. Now on the bottom, I just make a little wedge right here, like that. That wedge is so I can put it right here. Now another thing I didn't do, this is a little too long, so I'm gonna make my scion a little shorter. Okay, because you need it to match up for the length of your cut. All right, so there it is, like that. Then, what I'm doing is, you're gonna you try to match the cambium 
on your rootstock with the cambium on your scion. That is, that two little one or two cell layers that you have on, on both of those, you, you match up like that. Take my grafting tape. Oops. Now on this one, you do like, you, you get it around there. This is not stretchy like our parafilm. So I have to hold it with my thumb. And I come around and now once I get it like that, now I go. Now I leave the bark attached still. You don't, you can cut it off if you want or you can leave it. Doesn't make much of a difference. And I'm just wrapping it up. You're making sure that you're making it firm, but not pulling it so tight that you break the tape or hurt the scion. I wrap it up like this, and then typically what I do, I wrap over and snug down the top of the scion, and then in order to finish this, this is a little more complicated when you tie these off than with parafilm because you have to do a half hitch like this. You just take your thumb, push it out, come around, go through, and do like that. It becomes second nature. Once you start to tie a lot of these root, uh, graphs, you have no problem. Now you notice I did not cut off my, my rootstock. The rootstock is still full length. Didn't have to cut it off. So what happens is if this dies, if your scion dies, your rootstock will keep on growing. You can regraft it. Um, you normally, after you graft it, you can come in and you can pinch out the terminal bud or take your knife and you can shorten it a little bit. Just take off the top a little bit like that. All right now I do that because you want, you do not want your rootstock growing you want it to force your graft to push out. Now, a successful graft will start to grow in anywhere from 10 days to two weeks. It can sometimes sit on your plant for months before it grows out and push and, and go ahead and push out and be healthy. However, the, the best case scenario is that you start to have growth on your graft in about uh, two weeks. So once this thing does make a flush, makes the new leaves that come out, then you can come in. When, when this thing has grown one flush, growth of new leaves, and then pushes a second set of new leaves, then you come in with your clippers and you cut it right above the scion. But you only do this when this thing, when this scion has pushed out new growth and new leaves. And again, I normally wait for the second flush before I do that. You treat this just the same way you would a cleft graft. You place it in good um, bright light. You normally don't want to stick it in the full sun. Um, it will, you want to keep it well watered. You certainly do not want to fertilize it. Just wait on your fertilizer. Your tree should already be quite healthy and ready to go, so don't fertilize it yet. And once you cut it off, once you cut the rootstock off and let this start to grow, then you can start to treat it like a normal young tree with fertilization and normal watering. Other, now, just to contrast this with the, the cleft graft, you see that the difference is this one is all you're doing is making that veneer cut. You did not decapitate the seedling. You stick the veneer cut on there. It is more difficult in, if um, of a cut. So sometimes for many people find veneer grafts to not be as uh, not be as successful for them. But certainly it is a, a highly used technique around the world and very, very successful. And what I like about it is you do not have to have the same size between your scion and your rootstock. So it gives you a little more flexibility in terms of your grafting.